So we need to determine whether this series is convergent or divergent, and you're probably tackling this problem within the section on geometric series. And it does turn out that we can rewrite this series in terms of two distinct geometric series. So we're going to see how that's going to work. Now, the first thing that we'll do, and for the sigma notation, we'll omit the n equals 1 and infinity now just for simplicity, is we're going to take this expression and we're going to split it apart. We're basically going to take advantage of a common fraction property. When you have the following arrangement, you can split the numerator so it's a over c plus b over c. This is just a little arithmetic operation. So we're going to split this up into 1 over 11 to the power of n plus 12 to the power of n over 11 to the power of n. So far, so good. Now, what we'll do is distribute the sigma, and this is where we're going to get two distinct series. So we'll have 1 over 11 to the n for the first series, and then the second series will just be the 12 to the n over 11 to the n. Now, we're actually going to rewrite that. Because the 12 and the 11 are each raised to the power of n, you can rewrite that as 12 over 11, all of which is raised to the power of n. Indeed, for the first series, we can do something similar. 1 could be rewritten as 1 to the power of n. The reason for that, of course, is because 1 raised to any power is still 1. So by putting a little n up there, we don't change the quantity in any meaningful fashion. So we can rewrite this in a similar fashion. We'll have 1 over 11, all of which is raised to the power of n. Now what we'll try to do here is determine whether these individual series are convergent. These are both geometric series, and to really appreciate why that is, we're going to rewrite them yet again. So let's take the first series. We're going to try to convince you that we can rewrite that as 1 over 11 multiplied by 1 over 11 raised to the power of n minus 1. But let's pause here for a moment and make sure this makes sense. Now, this first 1 over 11 that we've written here would be raised to a power of 1. We recall from pre-calculus that when you multiply exponential expressions, what you're supposed to do with the exponents is add them. Notice if you add 1 to n minus 1, the 1 and the minus 1 would cancel, and that would give you just a power of n. So it is indeed true that if we were to multiply both of these exponential expressions, once we add the exponents, we would indeed return to 1 over 11 raised to the power of n. So this is an equivalent way of writing out the series. We can actually do the same thing with the other one. You might want to pause the video and try it out. But basically, it becomes 12 over 11 multiplied by 12 over 11 to the n minus 1. Now, these are both finally written in the standard geometric series form. You probably have learned that a geometric series can be written as a constant a multiplied by a common ratio r, all of which is raised to the power of n minus 1. Furthermore, you probably have learned that if the absolute value of r is less than 1, then your series is convergent. So for example, look at the first series. Okay, We have a value of a, which is 1 11th. We have an r, which is also 1 11th. And then we, of course, have this n minus 1 exponent. So in this case, for the first series, the absolute value of our r, which is 1 11th, would indeed be less than 1. So the first series is, lo and behold, convergent. But take a look at the second series. Now, the value of r in the second series is 12 elevenths. And the absolute value of 12 elevenths is definitely greater than 1 because the numerator is larger than the denominator. So that second series is actually divergent. And because the second series diverges, it doesn't really matter that the first series converges because this will take precedent. Basically, if we tried to add up this series, it would go to infinity. And infinity would certainly be larger than any finite result from the first convergence series. So in short, because the second series diverges, we're done with this problem. The overall original series is divergent.